Regarding quality 11, what does a soul-based understanding that living out of harmony with divine truth results in penalties or consequences look like in my personal life? Well, there's so many things that could be said here, of course. Yes. Firstly, I would not, I, I would understand that every time that I experience personal pain and suffering, whether that be physically or emotionally or spiritually, it means that I have done something in the past or I'm currently continuing to do something right now yes. that is out of harmony with a particular truth of God. And if I brought myself into harmony with that particular truth of God, then my symptoms, the pain and suffering that I'm experiencing, would disappear. Yeah. Now, if I understood just that one thing about this, I would, I would stop blaming anyone externally for my life. I would stop blaming everyone externally for my pain and suffering. I'd stop blaming God. I'd stop blaming religions. I'd stop blaming politicians. I'd stop blaming all sorts of people who are around me, even if, if I was in prison, stop blaming my, my prison guards for the pain and suffering that are in my, is in my life. And I would look inside of myself to try to discover how I acted out of harmony with love yeah. and truth. Yeah. Now, once you work your way through those particular things, you'll find that you'll, your whole life will change, literally, the whole life will change. It doesn't stop people from harming you, but even forgiveness causes less pain and suffering physically, emotionally and spiritually to yourself. Yeah. So engaging another law of love, forgiveness, can also bring you a lot of peace and a lot of control over what seemingly is an externally controlled situation. Yeah, it's very beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. You've written some notes here. Sure. Um, would you be happy if I just um, read out each one and yeah. we can discuss the one? Yep. Yeah. So the first one you've probably just about covered, mm -hmm. but um, I'll say it again. I feel emotionally that every time I break the law of divine truth, my soul experiences pain. Whenever I choose to act outside of the truth, I'm also choosing pain. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to read that probably because... If we have a soul-based understanding, we would know we're actually making a choice for pain whenever we act outside of truth. Yes, like so we need to come to understand that every time I'm experiencing pain and suffering, whether it's physically, emotionally or spiritually, I need to understand that I chose to act out of harmony with a law of love somehow. And it might not be a law that I'm consciously aware of, but I... But but the fact that I have pain and suffering of some kind indicates that I have chosen to act out of harmony with it. And this is where I could find out what the law was. Mm. I, could, I could start to ponder and use a lot more thought about what the law was that I actually did break. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Next one. I feel pain as a demonstration of my own desire to continue breaking divine law. Yes. So I would see all of God's truths are immovable objects. <laughs> all of God's truths are laws. Every time I desire to, to do something out of harmony with the law, it's going to result in pain. Now, the flip side of that is every time I feel pain, I chose to live out of harmony with law. So I need to see it as a choice, an exercise of my personal desire to live out of harmony with law. Something happened. Now, sometimes it's the choice of others that occurred. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so in particular with children, this is the case where the parent caused pain for the child by the parent's choice to act out of harmony with law. Yeah. Now, if we truly loved our children, we wouldn't do that. We would choose instead to look at what within myself might have caused the child to experience the pain it's currently experiencing, whether the child's pain is physical, emotional or spiritual. Mm. So we need to understand these things. Now, of course, there's complexities involved with this, and that is that other people can choose to harm us. Mm -hmm. But our response to that harm will depend, will, will, will be a choice that we make either in or out of harmony with love. So they could choose to harm us, and if we chose to operate in harmony with love under those circumstances, then our pain and suffering will be much lower yeah. 
and sometimes completely mitigated altogether yeah. than if we chose to respond in a manner that's out of harmony with God's truths or God's laws of love. Mm. 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 But it's a very key point that you mentioned earlier that most often we experience pain and we immediately blame someone else. Exactly. Even if they're sometimes because of an action they've taken, but sometimes it's even if there's not an apparent action that some say someone's punched you, yeah. that that hasn't even happened. But we experience pain, and many of us are so conditioned or used to then just looking for someone else to blame. Of course, which like, is yep, that's what we do. Places us completely out of harmony with this truth, doesn't it? It, it does. Yeah. It means that we don't have a sole understanding of this quality of God's truth. Yeah. You know, even when an insect bites us, the average person's response is, is <laughs> dead insect, right? Yeah. Um, not understanding that the insect biting us, which caused us a little bit of pain, mm -hmm. um, was actually the result of something we were already choosing that was out of harmony with love. Yeah. And it might be out of harmony with love of ourselves, mm -hmm. as well as out of harmony with love of our environment or out of harmony with love of others or out of harmony with love of God. So... The reality is many of these things, God's laws are applied equally to even love of self. Yeah. So if we choose to act out of harmony with love of self, there will be consequences that are painful to ourselves and mm -hmm. to others. If we choose to act out of harmony with love of others, there will be consequences. And we understand all this. And so when the insect bites us, we don't, we don't go anymore blaming the insect, right, once we've, once we've moved in. We go, okay... There's a reason why I'm getting bitten all the time and it's something inside of me that's out of harmony with love. Now, it could be out of harmony with love of myself. It could be out of harmony with love of others. It could be out of harmony with love of my environment, including love of the insect. Or it could be out of harmony with love of God. I've just got to discover what one it is. Mm -hmm. In other words, what truth will help me no longer be bitten by insects. Now, on earth, we don't believe that we can stop getting bitten by insects. But the reality is we can. If we bring everything inside of ourselves into harmony with love, we will no longer be bitten by an insect. Right? The, even the biting of an insect is an indication something inside of myself is out of harmony with love. Yeah. But we don't generally attack it from that perspective. What we do is we kill the insect or protect ourselves from the insect, but in the end we're still not addressing the underlying emotional reason that caused our pain, and in mm -hmm. this case, even though it was a minor bit of pain, yeah. that caused our pain. And if we do it with an insect, what do you think we're going to do with a person? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> what do you think we're going to do with somebody who actually has free will? The yeah. insect doesn't have free will. The insect is responding to our own will. Yeah. Whereas, whereas with another person, they have free will of their own. Now, if they attack us and and create physical pain for ourselves. And we, what are we going to decide to do there? Well, if we act in harmony with love, we will always have the best possible circumstances and outcome. Yeah. If we act in harmony with understanding all of God's truths, we will always have the best possible outcome. So it's imperative that we learn to discover this, you know, to discover what are God's truths. Mm. <laughs> and imperative that we learn it because it will create less pain and suffering for ourselves physically, emotionally and spiritually. And from what you're saying... When we have a soul-based understanding that living out of harmony with divine truth results in penalties and consequences, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to have any penalties or consequences anymore, but we have an understanding in our soul. Sorry, say that sentence again. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe I should phrase it as a question. If you bring if I... into harmony all of your own personal life into um, complete harmony with God's truths and God's love, you will not experience any pain and suffering at all. Yes, I understand. Even if somebody attacks you and harms you or tries to torture you, you will be able to circumnavigate the pain and suffering that yeah. might result. Yeah. So. But prior to that, we can have a soul-based understanding of this single truth. Yeah. And that will mean that whenever we encounter pain and suffering, yep. we will automatically engage a process of understanding a personal process. Yes. Yes. Of what is the other one of God's truths that I don't have a soul-based understanding of yet. Yes. That is causing my pain and suffering. Yes. So I was just so can I give an example that, of that perhaps? Yeah. Well, one example is a, one thing that I've had to learn personally is 
is how to come to love myself. That's been my biggest problem, in fact. My biggest problem in returning to the earth has been coming to love myself again the way God loves me. And uh, I'm still way out of harmony with that mm -hmm. at this point in time mm -hmm. because I still experience pain and suffering whenever I... And it's instant, as you know. Every time I don't love myself, I have an instant painful result generally yeah. that demonstrates to me, ah, there it goes again. I wasn't loving to myself again. There it goes again. I wasn't loving to myself again. So usually it's issues. It's not just issues where others love you. It's issues where you love others, where you love yourself and you love your environment. And I have spoken before to people about the four different areas of love, if you like. Firstly, the way others love others. And then there's the way others love you. And then there's the way you love others. And then there's the way you love yourself. And every one of these things have to be brought into harmony with love if we want to experience a painless and 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 what do you, what's an opposite to a suffering existence? <laughs> Pleasant, relaxed, yeah, uh, happy. Zero happy. suffering yeah. existence. We need to um, bring all of these particular aspects of love into harmony if we really want to experience this truth that we've discussed here in this quality. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, next one. Even if I as yet do not feel the divine truth, I choose to act in harmony with the truth. Yes. So um, we can hear a truth and we can hear it and know it's true without yet feeling it's truth. So in other words, uh, the average person on the planet knows for certain that it's not good to go and kill somebody. <laughs> that would be a statement of a truth. We mm -hmm. feel it's not good to go and kill somebody because it hurts them and it harms them and it, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why we know it to be true. We might feel under certain circumstances that we'd like to kill some people, depending on how we feel. Yeah. But because we choose to now act in harmony with one of God's truth, we choose, even though we don't emotionally yet feel the necessity to live in harmony with it, we choose to live in harmony because we know it's true mm -hmm. from an intellectual perspective. That is going to have a more positive outcome than if we just go along with the emotion. Well, and also because, as you're saying here in these notes, we have a soul-based understanding that if I act out of harmony with it, I'm going to have pain and suffering. Exactly. So even so, if I don't fully have, I haven't fully received that truth into my soul, I've got this other one in my soul that tells me, hey, I've got a list of measures of knowing if that's likely to be truthful. And if I think it is, yes. I don't want to act out of harmony with it. Yes. That's, is that really what you're saying Basically there? what we need to do, choose to do, even though there's a whole thing, usually a person internally is like this. There's a list of things that they have inside of themselves that they know intellectually are out of harmony with love. But they still like doing some of them. Yes. My suggestion is stop doing them, <laughs> even if you like doing them. And secondly, work on the reason why you like doing it. So if you like attacking other people verbally, it's not loving. You're going to have consequences for doing it. Like stop doing it, number one, stop doing it. Number two, look at the soul-based reason why you want to do it. What, what, what joy, malicious joy it would be, do you receive from doing it? What do you get out of it? Look at the reasons why. If you truly understood this principle, you would understand that every time you act out of harmony with what you know to be right, you are automatically incurring a, a soul-based penalty, which at some point later you're going to have to pay for, for with pain and suffering. Right? So you'd be, benefic be benefited by not doing that, even though you want to. Mm -hmm. You'd be benefited by not doing it. Let's look at an issue of love of self. You know that smoking harms your health. You know it does. So why do you stay smoking? Why do you keep doing it? If you truly upheld and understood this truth, you would go to yourself, okay, I haven't changed the reason why I want to smoke. You know, that might be lots of things that cause that. You know, mm -hmm. it might be the way my parents treated me, how I grew up, it might be my own sense of self-worth and all sorts of issues. Sadness that I'm trying to overcome, fear that I'm trying to control, all sorts of issues might be the reason. But if I stop smoking right now, I will no longer have to endure the effects of many of the, of the actual smoking that smoking will bring, which will possibly result in throat cancer, lung cancer, and, and a number of other problems, emphysema and other, other, other problems which have all been documented. Mm -hmm. So 
So just stopping smoking, the physical act, is going to result in less consequences in my life. Then, if I was truly understanding this principle, I would go, okay, not only am I going to stop the action that I know is out of harmony with love of myself or another, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to try to discover the reason why inside of myself I feel like I want to take that action out of harmony with love. And, and if I understood this divine truth that all of God's laws result or all of God's truths result in penalties or consequences, positive or negative, depending on how we engage the law, then we would stop trying to reason with ourselves by going, oh, it's okay that I'm smoking. You know, we wouldn't say, oh, it's okay that I'm smoking. You know, I'm willing to pay the consequence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it means I get lung cancer, I'm willing to pay it. Now, how many people say that? But when it comes to having lung cancer, they no longer feel that and they want drugs now to overcome it. They want to go into a hospital and have hundreds of people, or ten, ten, at least tens of people, look after them on a daily, weekly, and even an hourly basis, yeah. which are all the consequences of your choice to make a choice that's out of harmony with love. Yeah. And, and we, if you look at human society now, there is so many professions which, is, which are all about helping people stay out of harmony with love mm -hmm. and not have to bear the full consequence of their choice that they made earlier in their life. Yeah. If we had a different approach, I'm sure quite a lot of people would stop smoking. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm not like saying it. that that means that we not have to not care for people. I'm just saying that we've got to start seeing that every choice we're making not only has a negative effect on ourselves, but it causes pain and suffering for others. Mm -hmm. It causes pain and suffering for others. And we need to understand that. That's one of the universe. Another truth, is it not, that when we ignore love in one area, it has a flow, whether it be love of our environment, love mm -hmm. of others, or love of ourselves, mm -hmm. it has a flow on effect to the other areas anyway. That's the way it's God's created the universe. Exactly. To give us feedback in a number of ways. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if we truly wanted to reduce our own pain and suffering, rather than, you know, usually what we do is we don't truly want to until our pain and suffering becomes extreme. Yeah. My suggestion is we need to become a lot more sensitive to our pain and suffering so that it doesn't have to be as extreme before we change our behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. If we understood this law, we wouldn't, we wouldn't wait until our pain and suffering is extreme. Yeah. We, we would be sensitive to the, even the smallest amount of pain and we would examine the reason why it occurred. Yes, yeah. So the next one probably flows on from that. Um, I feel pain in my life is the direct result of not living in divine truth or divine love. Mm -hmm. And then I enjoy how God I enjoy <laughs> how God has given me this direct feedback mechanism displaying my lack of love. Yes. This is a beautiful thing when you think about it from God's perspective and, and even from a perspective of growth. We are getting constant feedback about what's out of harmony. And this is really wonderful because it gives us the chance to change. Mm -hmm. If we weren't receiving the constant feedback, we would probably ignore change in a positive direction. But we're receiving constant, constant feedback and this is a fantastic thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's a very positive thing that we're doing. Receiving constant feedback allows us to change in a positive direction, to become more loving. And so if I understood this law, this principle of God's truth, if you like, I would go, okay, this is wonderful that God's giving me these, conse these consequences, positive and negative consequences I'm receiving every single moment of my life. And the more I'm willing to go through and find and discover what brought me the positive consequences, and what brought me the negative consequences, the more rapidly my life will change. Yeah. And, and the reality is if, the mo if most of us spent most of our time doing that now, our life in the future would be amazingly different in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. But the reality for most of us is that we choose very, to spend very little time in self-analysis like that. We look at our pain and suffering, we blame other people for it, we blame our environment for it, we blame, you know, politics, you know, the politicians, or we blame the religions, and we blame, we blame as many people as we possibly can. And as a result, we take away our personal power to change. Yeah. And when we do that, 
we are showing that we don't have this quality of divine truth in our soul. We don't understand it. Mm. We don't understand the truth about the way God's created the universe. Because through denying, we're only compounding the issue. We're yes. only compounding the pain by blaming or denying. Exactly. We're yeah. going to make more pain. Yeah. Because every time you blame another for what you've created, you're going to create <laughs> more pain. Yeah. You've just broken another law, yes. another moral law that has a consequence on your soul. And, and this is the way God's laws work. You, if you choose to rebel against them, they are all going to create something for which you at some point in the future will feel pain and suffering. Mm. Mm. Okay. I do not avoid dealing with past sins or errors just because of the painful emotions involved. Yes, we see this happening a lot where people say to us, oh, that's in the past. And we're going, but no, no, your body and your life and everything is telling you right now that the pain you're experiencing right now is because of that thing that was in the past. You need to feel about it. You need to process your way through it. You need to release the reason why you chose to do it. You need to see the relationship, cause and effect relationship. The effect is the pain you're in. The cause is the choices that you've made. But you need to see this relationship. And this is particularly the case in the Western world because we are more of the oppressors, if you like. So it's particularly the case in the Western world. The, you know, this is why the Western world generally has more disease. Even though we have more medication, we also have more disease generally than many other nations that, that were classified as the third world. And, and the reason why we have a lot of these, what are all, what, what we call, there's, there's, you could say there's a separation of the types of diseases, aren't there? So mm -hmm. In the third world, most of the diseases are environmental in nature. In, 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 the, in the first world, if we want to call it that, most of the diseases are self-caused. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of them, like heart disease, you know, yeah. lung cancer. Lifestyle. Bowel cancer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, breast cancers, yeah. you know, they're all based around what we've chosen to do out of harmony and love. And the incidences of them are much higher, of those kind of diseases are much higher than they are in, in the third world. And the reason why that is is because we're acting out of harmony with love yeah. a lot, <laughs> even though we want to believe that we're not. Yeah. And if we truly understood this quality, we would start going, be more self-reflective. We would mm. go, okay. There's something I need to change here. There's something that out of harmony with love in my self that's creating these attractions. Yeah. And on that issue of illness and disease <laughs> in say, the developing world or whatever you want to call it, um, it's very true, isn't it, that often here in the West we have even the physical technology or medication to alleviate most of the suffering that exists in the third world, mm -hmm. or for very for a large majority, things like mosquito nets and very medication that is very um, relatively cheap here mm -hmm. for us to mm -hmm. to produce or and create, yeah. and, and yet, yet we, we, don't share it. we don't share it. We resist doing that for whatever we make well, a money. lot of excuses. Economic we only reasons. resist do it for money. Yeah, there's plenty of money being made by pharmaceutical companies but we don't share some of the results of their discoveries yep. with the third world because they won't, they will make less money. Yes. And, and we might have to subsidize it. Yeah. And we don't want to do that. Yeah. So it's really, again, selfishness that drives a lot of those particular things occurring. And has this flow on effect of a lot of suffering. Yep. Um, so we're actually neglecting the growth of our own soul by giving up issues of greed and fear. We are. Um, and it has this flow on effect of really, perpetuating a lot of suffering, yes. uh, needless suffering really. But yeah. the truth also is that if a person is in Africa and uh, doesn't have any medication and doesn't have any mosquito nets and gets bitten by a mosquito, there is. there is something inside of their particular soul right at that moment that's out of harmony with love. And if they addressed it, they would never have gotten bitten by this mosquito that caused malaria in the first place. Yes. And yeah. so, you know, again, we can see that every, this applies to every single person on the planet. No one is exempt yeah. from the law. Yeah. Every single person needs to be self-analytical with regard yeah. to this particular quality yeah. of divine truth. Which in a way is beautiful because everyone's equally empowered yes. to discover. Yes. Yeah. And wouldn't it be interesting if half of Africa all got themselves into a, quality, a state of love where they weren't getting bitten by mosquitoes anymore and then they didn't need any pharma, you know, any... Yeah. any uh, Mosquito net or pharmaceutical issue. You know, to, to, to correct the yeah. issue. 
And, and everyone else would be looking at them going, how come you have no <laughs> mosquitoes by you? When we go there, we get eaten alive. Yeah. And, uh, and then maybe they might look at it. So, so even the people who are oppressed, if they change with regard to the issues of love, you can see that, uh, that there would be a positive benefit worldwide through yeah. the operation. Yeah. So, you know, I feel a lot of the arguments people have against these principles are all to do with rebellion. They just want to rebel. And, yeah. and honestly, rebelling against God's truth, not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, we'll get to that one on the list because I wanted to ask you about it. Yeah. <laughs> Next one. I recognise the importance of keeping each sin in front of my own eyes until released emotionally. Yeah, so let's look at sin meaning missing the mark or, or being in error from a point of view of love. So what I do is I go, okay, I was bitten by a mosquito, right? I, instead of just brushing the mosquito or, you know, like killing the mosquito, brushing it all off and forgetting about it, I would go, hang on a sec, there's an issue of love here that I've just, by brushing it off or killing the mosquito, I'm just ignoring the issue of love. Mm -hmm. I need to allow myself to feel what this issue of love is about. And to do that, I need to use my will to keep the issue of love present. I need to go, okay, and so a week ago, I was bitten by a mosquito. Two weeks ago now, I was bitten by a mosquito. <laughs> There's still this issue of love, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. and, and I keep the issue of love in front of myself until such a time as I can work, go out into some mis mosquito infested place <laughs> and not be bitten. Yeah. And then, then I go, okay, now I've dealt with this issue of love yeah. that, that, that I had out of harmony with my soul. And I keep myself, I keep, use my will to remind myself that the issue is still present mm. within me while I'm experiencing the pain and suffering that results from it. Yeah. yeah. And presumably there's issues such, you mentioned abortion earlier, or big, larger issues. Huge uh, issues. Infidelity, things that we can quickly recognise as sin. Yeah. Uh, perhaps, or missing or the missing mark the of mark. love. Yeah. Yeah. Things that are not in harmony with God's love. Yeah. Um, and so presumably then we have a lot of pain from that, that many of us then try to um, manage or deny. Or medicate. <laughs> or medicate, yes. <laughs> we manage and deny it in whatever way possible sometimes. Yes, yes. Sometimes we self-medicate with alcohol. Yes. Sometimes with food or yes. with drugs. Yes. Um, or pharmaceuticals or non that are prescribed. Or... Yeah. yeah. Or busy ourselves or all do sorts all of kinds of things. Yeah. So presumably from this... Um, this truth that you're saying is we're actually going to do the opposite to that when we have we this soul We would choose to do the opposite. Yeah. We willingly choose to say, where is my pain about this issue? Yeah. I, I, I want, want to feel, to feel it. it. Yeah. Because it's a consequence that I need to feel. Yeah. And I need to understand how it was created. Yeah. I need to feel about how it was created. So if I get a cold or, or feel sick in any way, I need to look at what created it. And in my case, lately, whenever I get it, if I get some kind of illness, um, it's usually because I haven't been loving to myself the week before. Yeah. Almost every case now, that's the case yeah. where I know, ah, oh, there it is. That, that was the time. That's why I've got this now. Yeah. And once I get rid of those particular love of self issues, then a lot of them disappear. Yeah. And, and this is what we need to understand, is that while we act out of harmony with love, while we act out of harmony with God's truth, there, we, there are unavoidable consequences. While we act in harmony with love and in harmony with God's truth, there are unavoidable positive <laughs> consequences. <laughs> you know, you will attract a whole heap of things that are very positive as yeah. a result. And that brings us to our next point, which is, I have a passionate desire to live in harmony with all of God's laws. Yes, because I understand this, under, this underlying truth that there is consequences negatively and positively. If I live in, in harmony with the law, always positive consequences. Can you see that that would give you a lot of faith and desire to act in harmony with God's laws? You, you, you won't be going to yourself, oh, I want to break this law and I want to break that law and I know about that law now, but I want to break it because it's... You yeah. wouldn't do that ever. In fact, you'd be completely the opposite. I know about that law. Now I want to live my life in harmony with that law because I'm going to receive... Lots of personal benefits to doing that, but also everyone around me is going to receive lots of personal benefits to my doing it. Yeah, mm. yeah. 
All right, so the final one on your list. Yeah. I feel no feelings of rebellion against God's laws. Yeah, and this is something we see all the time, people just constantly rebelling against God's laws because they think their personal motivations are justified. Usually that's the underlying thing. They, many know God's laws. Like we, we know people who know God's laws about abortion and have gone and had one afterwards. Yeah. And that, that's an indication that, that there is a deep desire within to rebel against God's laws mm. and why do they want to rebel against them because they've all it's going to do is result in more pain and suffering in their life like it makes no sense to rebel it's like rebelling against the law of gravity <laughs> why would you want to do that you know it makes no yeah. sense yeah. but the majority of us like I said wish to rebel against the higher laws because their consequences are not felt as immediately or as strongly as the consequences of breaking a physical law. Yeah. So the higher the law, the usually higher justification we personally have to rebel against it. Yeah. Ironically, if we understood the lesson from the lower law, which is every time I rebel, there is an instant consequence, we wouldn't try to rebel against the higher law, understanding that rebelling against the higher law is going to have even more painful consequence than the immediate physical consequence had. Mm -hmm. from breaking the physical law. Mm. And if we truly understood that, we would not rebel against any law. Mm. We would wish to discover the law and we'd wish to live in harmony with it. Mm. So um, why do we rebel? Is it arrogance? Is it anger? Is it Because it's such a common thing that we see. Because we, don't, we lack love. That's we the only reason why we rebel. We don't want to love. We don't want to love. Mm. And, and God's going, okay, you don't want to love, you're going to have a consequence for not loving. Yeah. You want to rebel, you're going to have a consequence for rebelling. Mm -hmm. And it's only because we don't want to love. We don't want to love God's way. We want to love our own way or we don't want to love at all. Yes. And both of those prob are a problem. Yeah. From God's perspective, God's made a universe, a universe that's based around God's definition of love and sooner or later we're going to be brought into harmony with it. Some of us, most of us, kicking and screaming yeah. into harmony with it. Others, willingly. And my and suggestion desires. to people is yeah. understand these basic qualities of divine truth and bring yourself willingly into harmony, not, yeah. not, not kicking and screaming. Yeah. Well, why would you want to do that? Yeah. You're going to have more pain and suffering doing that. This yeah. is the principle that we're discussing. Yeah. Every time you don't understand this principle from a soul perspective, every time you go and revert to rebellion, you are basically saying you don't understand this principle at the soul level, but you're also basically saying that you're going to create for yourself more pain and suffering because you want to. Yeah. Now, that makes very little logical sense, but lots and lots of people, the majority of people, in fact, are doing that. And this is why when they pass into the spirit world and then receive the true consequences of everything that they've done through the law of what you sow, you will reap, which is a moral law, once they understand that, then they go, oh, we want to return back to earth and tell people not to do those things. Mm -hmm. But it's too late then because the majority of people on earth are not listening either. Yeah. So my suggestion is to change that rebellious behaviour. Look at the reasons, whatever they are, it doesn't really matter. It's just a desire to be out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. So forget about, like, like, you don't have to know intricately what the... The, what the reasons are, you just need to go, okay, I obviously want to act out of harmony with love and I want to rebel against what I know to be God's laws. I've got a problem. Yeah. I need to sort it out. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the wise course of action yeah. and the most logical. Yes. Yeah. 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 Great.